Welcome to session one of the Reclamation Series, a four session series for survivors of sexual assault and abuse. I welcome you, I invite you to really tap into your right to choose because this whole practice of trauma-informed yoga is really a practice of choice, but especially in this session, we are focusing on choice and our inherent right to make choices for ourselves and our bodies and our needs, what we want, all of the above. And so I hope that this session is a, an opportunity and a celebration of your inherent right to choose. So with that being said, I invite you to come into any seated shape that feels welcome to your body. I'm here in just an easy seated shape. I'm sitting on a blanket, a folded blanket. You could also use a bolster to sit on. And if you'd like, you could even utilize a blanket, a second blanket. Maybe have it handy, have it nearby to use to cover up if you ever desire or need an extra layer of protection. And so I'm going to cover up my lap today because that's what feels welcome to me. However, you could also drape the blanket over you, over your shoulders, over your whole body, if that's what feels most welcome. And you don't have to sit with your legs crossed. If you feel like your knees are maybe uncomfortable or tight, whatever it may be, or maybe it's your hips, you can extend maybe one or both legs out in front of you. You can also come into a butterfly shape with the soles of the feet together. And again, you might also utilize the blanket to provide a sense of covering. And so whenever you find a shape that suits your body in this moment, taking this very first opportunity to choose for yourself, what does my body need? And how does that look and feel for me? Because it doesn't have to be the same as what I'm doing because your body is different than my body. So whenever you do find that seated shape, I invite you to decide if you would like to take the eyes closed or if you would prefer to leave your gaze open. And if you prefer to leave your gaze open, you might explore allowing the eyes to just rest on an unmoving spot, perhaps staring down the bridge of the nose. And as you arrive into this practice, a gentle reminder that everything in this practice is an invitation. Everything I share with you is optional. And I'm going to do my best to provide you with lots of options. However, it's up to you, it's your choice what you decide to do with your body. And I celebrate your choices. And I celebrate and I honor your right to choose. You might begin by noticing how you have chosen to sit. Becoming aware of the body. You might even focus your awareness into where your body meets, whatever support is holding you in this moment. Are you sitting on a bolster, a blanket, or the floor? What is it that is supporting you in this moment?
And from there, you might choose to take an outline of your body, just scanning through it, noticing how you might be feeling in this moment. And if it feels welcome, you might place one hand over your heart and one over your abdomen. Or another option is to bring both of your hands to touch at the center of your chest. So whichever one you prefer, choosing for yourself. And as always, you could forgo those options and choose to just stay where you are if that is serving you. And I offer you an affirmation for our practice. I call back to me my freedom to choose. I call back to me my freedom to choose. Taking a moment to let this sit with you and notice what this brings up. Does this feel right? Does this feel truthful to you in this moment? And if so, you might decide to work with this affirmation. You could even alter it to fit your needs. I am calling back to me my freedom to choose. I'm in the process of this portion of my healing. Or you might even shorten it and just say, I am free to choose. I am free to choose. So whichever one you resonate with most, I invite you to work with the affirmation of your choice. I call back to me my freedom to choose, or I am free to choose. And when you have the affirmation you'd like to partner with for this session, you might take a conscious breath into this intention allowing it to settle down a little bit deeper into your body, into your heart. And you might decide to stay here a little while longer, or if you're ready to begin moving, option two, inhale and reach the arms up overhead. And as you reach the arms up overhead, you might even feel your spine following suit feeling a little bit taller. And as you exhale, option one is to draw the elbows down like a goal post, and you might draw the heart space forward and draw the shoulders and elbows back. Kind of like you're in a little bit of a back bend. And as you exhale, you might allow your elbows to close like a book, hollowing out the heart and allowing the spine to round in the opposite direction. Your inhale could bring you back open. Your exhale could take you closed. So this is option one. Moving at your own pace, starting to notice the space that is being created in your body. Option two is to bring your hands down toward your legs. And you might explore making some torso circles. So you could inhale and allow your spine to come forward and exhale, allow it to round back. And these circles can be whatever size you want them to be. Maybe they're really big. 
Maybe they're really small. So allowing the spine to move in whatever capacity feels right to you today. And if you are taking torso circles, at some point you might even explore taking them the opposite way. So changing the direction of your circles. As we continue to move and breathe. Four, one to two more rounds of breath. You are free to choose. You are free to choose what is nourishing for you. You are free to choose what feels in alignment with you. And you are also free to choose to release whatever expectations or shoulds or should nots that do not serve you. And so after your second round of breath, you might begin to come back to center, taking a pause, noticing what kind of sensations are present in your body here. And you might continue to stay here, resting in this awareness of whatever sensation you are exploring. Or if you're ready to be moving again, you might again inhale the arms up, maybe even allowing the spine to follow. And as you exhale, option to bring one hand down to the floor. And you might even reach your opposite hand over your head with the hand connected to the floor stabilizing you feeling this strength breathing here for another two rounds of breath you might stay in stillness or you might even bend into your top elbow pulling it back towards your ribs and then reaching it back over feeling the difference And after your second breath, you might come back to center. Can you feel or notice any difference on the left side of your body compared to your right? And if you're ready for the next side, you could inhale the arms up one more time and exhale. Your opposite hand could come down toward your mat and maybe your top hand reaches over. Option to stay here in stillness or you might add movement by bending that top elbow and reaching your top hand. Noticing that as you move your body or stay in stillness, what a, there is a sensation here from this movement as we take one last round of breath. And I'll meet you back at center whenever you're ready. Option to roll through the shoulders or even move through the neck. You choose. And if it feels welcome, you might even sway a little bit. And as you sway, perhaps bringing some awareness into your ribs, into your spine, and just noticing how does this area of my body feel right now compared to when I first started. And maybe there's a little bit more space or maybe a bit more warmth just from the movement. 
In your own timing, you might begin to meet me um, in a child's pose or in downward facing dog. Or actually, we can all start in, in child shape if that feels welcome. And if it doesn't feel welcome, you could explore tabletop shape and I'll walk you through those options now. It might feel welcome if the floor is hard um, it might feel welcome to place a blanket just to support your, your knees. And your second blanket you could have ready. If you know that or you're curious to explore, um, having a little bit more covering, having the second blanket can really be helpful. So option one, you might begin to start in tabletop shape and that's just on all fours. And you could allow the knees to come a little bit further than hip distance apart, maybe even as far as your, um, as wide as your mat, but they don't have to be that wide if that doesn't feel supportive to your body. And then your toes back behind you might even touch. So not necessarily overlap because that might cause some discomfort when we send our hips back, but just touching. And then if you're ready, you could send the hips back toward your heels. And this is where you could drape the blanket over you, but I'm going to forego, forego that just for a moment so that you can see what I'm doing. And then option one is to walk your hands forward and perhaps even rest your forehead on the mat. And here, if your forehead is touching the mat, you might even allow your head to roll from one side to the other, massaging your forehead. Option two, if it doesn't feel safe to have your gaze down, you might even stack your fists on top of one another and rest your chin or rest your forehead allowing your gaze to stay open if that is what you need right now. And if child's pose does not feel welcome, you might simply come to your elbows, staying much more lifted, or you might even just stay in a tabletop. And as always, we can use our blankets to provide a little bit of safety, a little bit of comfort if you want it. And as you settle in here, we'll be here for the next three rounds of breath. You might observe your natural breathing, flowing in and out at its own pace. Perhaps even bringing the affirmation to mind. I call my freedom to choose back to me. Last breath. And if this shape is continuing to serve you, you might stay here longer. If you're ready to move on, you might begin to lift your gaze, to look at your hands, and walk your hands back. If you have your arms outstretched, I'm gonna move my blanket out of the way, but you can continue to utilize it if you want to. And I'll meet you in a tabletop. And this is option one here. So option one is downward facing dog. And so you might even walk your hands forward a little bit 
past your shoulders to create a bit of space. And if you'd like to explore this shape, you could tuck your toes and begin to inhale and draw the hips up and back. I like to keep my knees bent here just to start. So that's an option. And if your hamstrings, the big muscles in the back of your legs are feeling really tight, you might even take your feet as wide as the mat. However, you could also keep them hip distance apart. And if you'd like, you could start to release one heel down toward the floor. And then like pedaling a bike, you could release the opposite heel. Perhaps moving back and forward between the two heels, giving your body a moment to explore the shape. And even as you're here, exploring the strength that it takes to be in this shape, the work that your arms and hands are doing, your core and your quads and your legs, your whole body is tapping into your inner resource here your physical strength. And if this shape doesn't feel welcome to you, you might release the knees down to the floor. If you are still enjoying down dog, you might choose to stay there a little while longer as I give option number two. Option number two might really help to have a blanket handy covering up your lower section. And you could engage your core about half strength. This is puppy shape or a puppy pose as you walk your hands forward and you might allow your forehead to come down towards the earth. So lots of opening in the shoulders, in the chest and a little bit more core activation here. And that's just to protect your, your lower back and your spine. That's option two. And when you're ready, you could meet me back in tabletop shape. Taking a moment to move through your body in any way that feels welcome to you. Moving organically for just one round of breath. <sighs> okay, we'll start getting into our flow. So option here to extend the right leg back, maybe even taking one or two ankle rolls. And then if you have blocks, you could have them handy. We'll breathe in here and exhale. You could draw your right foot up and place it on the outside of your right hand. And if you need to use your right hand to grab your ankle and help pull your leg forward, absolutely you can do that too. And here some blocks might be helpful as we take some time in our low lunge. And again, if there's any discomfort in your knee that is holding you up, so in this case, it's my left knee, it might be really um, helpful to have the blanket. And if it doesn't feel like it's enough, you can fold the blanket or the towel again to create a little bit more cushion. And so as you find your way into a low lunge, maybe you utilize your blocks here, noticing that, that there's three heights to the blocks and finding the one that works best for you. Taking this opportunity to just feel into your hips. Perhaps this stillness doesn't feel welcome. And if so, you could even Explore lunging into it and lunging out of it. As we take one to two more breaths here, you might even come up off of the hands or the blocks and take a moment here and still a low lunge, but now our chest is lifted rather than having the hands on the floor. Both are good options. It just depends on what you want. And as we start to finish up our last breath, you might choose to stay here, or if your right foot is forward, you could take your block and bring it to your, the right side of your hip. 
as we inhale and breathe our arms up and exhale you could place your right hand on your block or the floor as you reach the left arm over in another lateral stretch really opening up the side body observing here if the left hip left side body is experiencing any new sensations and if so what are they Last breath. With an inhale, you might decide to come back to center. And then exhale to bring your hands down to the blocks or your mat. And you could press back into your left hip. So you send your hips back. Just create a little bit of room so that your right foot can come back. And again, just taking this opportunity to kind of move into your body, noticing what's different here, what's changed. And then we'll take the other side. So you could extend your left leg, maybe even rolling through the ankle once or twice. And then if you're ready, we could breathe in and exhale, draw the left foot forward or whichever foot is opposite from last time for you. Drawing the left foot forward, however it gets there, I'll meet you there, take your time. There's no rush. Option two, utilize your blocks here. And as we first arrive, you might even feel into you, your right hip, whichever leg is extended back in the lunge and observe how this side of your body might have a really different sensation than the previous side or maybe it's the same sensation but different intensity so can we extend a little bit of patience and understanding to this duality that we constantly live in. Option to lift the hands or lift the chest, taking this chance to feel into your right quad, maybe even placing your hand on top of your quad and feeling the strength here that's holding you up. And if you have a block and you'd like to take the lateral stretch, you could move the block to your left side. We'll inhale the arms up. And as you exhale, you might bring your left hand to your block. And reach your right arm over. Breathing here at your own pace for two more rounds of breath. This is a very opening shape. And so giving yourself permission to leave at any time if the shape is not serving you. And if you're ready to come out, I'll meet you right back at center. Releasing the hands down to the mat. And sending the left foot back when you're ready. Option here to send the hips back, send the hips back into a child's shape. Or if you prefer, you might tuck the toes and lift the hips and come into a down dog. So there is not a shape that is better or worse <laughs> than another. That is not what this practice is about. This practice is a celebration of your choice. It is a celebration of your body, your story, your lived experiences. The 
the shape really doesn't matter. What matters is you in this moment being with yourself and how are you being with yourself? Okay, so we'll take that flow one more time and we'll add on a little bit to it. So if you are in down dog, there will be a new option here. And if you prefer not to be in down dog, you might meet me in a tabletop shape. So the new option here is to take a three-legged dog. So you might bring your left foot more towards the center of your mat. And as you inhale, you could start to come up onto the left ball of your foot, left toes, and reach your right leg up towards the sky. Maybe you wiggle through the right ankle. And then as you exhale, wherever you're at, you can start to bring your right knee, right foot forward and place it on the outside of your right hand for our low lunge. So right back to where we were just a moment ago, except for this time, we're not gonna be there as long. So we're gonna add on. So still using our blocks as an extension of our arms to reach the floor if we have them and if you want them. And you could inhale, option to keep the hands grounded or reach the hands up towards the sky, breathing it in. And as you exhale, option to bring the hands right back down to the earth. We're gonna skip the lateral stretch because we're gonna go somewhere else. And with our hands on the earth, you could start to heel toe your right foot over to your left wrist and then allow the right knee to fall over to the right as we come into a pigeon pose. So we'll spend a little bit of time here. You might utilize your blocks, maybe bringing them underneath your elbows if this feels welcome. Or if you don't have blocks, it could be the same shape here. You could bring your elbows down to the earth if you want to. You could also use a block to rest your forehead so that you don't have to hold up your head and create tension in your neck. I welcome you to first of all, Decide if this shape is welcome to your body. And if you'd like to be in this shape, then I invite you to be here for the next four to five rounds of breath. You might even decide that you do enjoy this shape and that you do want to be here. However, you might not want to be here as long as I'm here. And if so, I offer you this invitation to leave whenever you need to. Whenever you decide that a shape is no longer welcome to your body, you can choose to leave at that exact moment. You do not have to stay in a shape that causes you pain or a shape that causes you to feel overwhelmed, whatever it is, you know yourself best. We'll finish up our last round of breath here in Pigeon. And if you're on your elbows, you could start to make your way up onto your hands. Okay, our back leg, we can start to sit onto our front hip and allow the back leg to come forward. And we're kind of like in this wide shape. So my left leg, rather than being directly out in front of me, 
is still really out to the side, but you can choose for yourself which one feels best. So you could have your left leg out to the side, or you could have your left leg extending straight forward. So you choose. Two options here, you could inhale, reach the arms up overhead. And if your leg is out to the side, you might even reach. Staying with our lateral stretches, our side stretches. This is option one. If your leg is directly out in front of you, you could just reach straight forward, which is gonna be a different stretch. It's gonna be more in the hamstrings. So you choose, what does your body need? And if you're out to the side, you might even use your forearm, your elbow area to rest on the top of your leg. That's another option. You can also bring your hand down to the floor. Breathing in and out for another one to two breaths. And if you're ready to leave this shape, you might start to inhale, come back to center. And if your leg is straight out in front of you for this next movement, you might even move it out to the side a little bit more. So we inhale the right arm up and back and plant the right hand on the floor back behind you. And if you'd like, this is a modified wild thing. So you could press the hips up, come up onto your right knee and breathe in really big, reaching the left arm back and up. Maybe your gaze looks up towards the ceiling as your heart shines up and forward, really leading with your heart space here. The left foot can be grounded on the floor if you need to move it to stabilize yourself, you can. So we take one last breath here. And then exhale to lower the hips right back down. Ooh, that was a big heart opener. That was a big shape. <sighs> so taking just a moment, wherever you're at, however you're sitting, to check in with your body before we rush to the other side. What do you feel? You might even notice your heart rate increasing. Maybe your breath has increased. <sighs> And when you're ready, I'll meet you back in your choice of a child's pose or a down dog. Wherever you want to be, I'll meet you there. One round of breath in and out at your own pace. And if you'd like to take three-legged dog on this side, you can move your right foot to the center of your mat. Inhale, come up onto the ball of your right foot, tiptoes and press up. Lengthening through the left leg as it reaches towards the sky, maybe an ankle roll here. And then when you're ready to, you can use your exhale to draw the left foot forward. If you are in child's pose, you can shift into a tabletop and then draw your left leg forward, planting the left hand on the outside. Sorry, planting the left foot on the outside of the left hand. Taking just a moment here to get your bearings, really allowing yourself ample time to set up because there's no rush. You can. Take as long as you want to in every single shape, every single transition. Option to keep your hands grounded or 
option to lift up through the chest, through the arms, breathing in here. You might leave the arms lifted or you might bring the hands down, feeling into this low lunge into your hips, into your quads. And then we'll come right back down, hands to the earth when you feel complete. And you could heel toe your left foot over to the right and allow the left knee to fall over to the left hand, left wrist. Coming into a pigeon on this side. And again, you could come down onto your blocks or just onto the floor, whatever is accessible. And we'll be here for the next five rounds of breath. And here for those five breaths, you might explore sending your breath directly to where you are feeling the sensation in your body. And maybe with each inhale, you repeat the words either internally or out loud. I am free to choose. Inhale, I am free to choose. Exhale, release any <laughs> any story, whether it be from other people or our own lived experiences that have told us that we are not free to choose. Inhaling, I am free to choose. Exhale, releasing. One to two more rounds of breath here on your own. Last one. And if you <clears throat> have your elbows connected to the blocks or the mat, you might start to walk your hands up and sit onto your front hip, allowing your back leg to swing forward. And again, you have the, your choice. You can bring your right leg, your extended leg directly out in front of you, or you can keep it a little bit wider, <clears throat> a little bit more open. And if you are ready, you can inhale and reach your arms up and exhale, reaching for <clears throat> whatever extended leg out there, <laughs> either directly in front of you or to the side, stabilizing your body in a way that you know how to do. And breathing in your own way for the next one to two rounds of breath. And when you feel complete, you come right back up to center. If you'd like to join me for a wild thing, you could inhale your left arm up and back, planting it firmly and pressing up through the hips onto your left knee, reaching up through the heart, stabilizing your right foot, your right leg, in a way that feels supportive, adjusting it if need be. And here, just taking one to two more rounds of breath. Might even repeat the affirmation, I am calling my freedom to choose back to me. 
and release the hips back down towards the earth whenever you feel complete. Sitting in any way that feels readily available to you in this moment. And just taking a few breaths to become aware of whatever is to be noticed inside of your body and your heart right now. <sighs> Last breath in and out. And if you're ready, you might begin to find your way into a child's pose, utilizing the blanket if you would like to, or foregoing it if that's what you prefer. You have many options here. You could bring the forehead down to the mat, or you might keep the gaze lifted by stacking your fists or by lifting the chest by bringing the elbows to the floor. Your choice. What do you need? And here I welcome you to take about four rounds of breath. Allowing your breathing to slow down. Allowing your heart rate to slow down. Sinking into the support beneath you. Last round of breath. And if you'd like, you could continue to stay here in this child's shape. If this is a welcome resting pose for you, or you can choose any other shape to rest in. So that could look like coming into a seated shape, if that's what you prefer, maybe using the blanket to drape over you. You could also just simply come to lay maybe on your stomach or on your back or even on your side, utilizing <clears throat> the props to support this time of rest for you as we move into a short guided meditation. You can even try out one shape. Maybe you rest on your stomach and notice, how does this feel? Does this feel <clears throat> safe and supportive? Maybe even draping the blanket over you. And if this doesn't, you could choose a different shape. Perhaps lying on your side or maybe sitting up. And here you can decide if you want your eyes open or closed. <sighs> Noticing what is supporting your body here. feeling whatever's beneath you. Maybe it's a yoga mat. <clears throat> Maybe it's a blanket.
And here, as you start to settle in, I welcome you to check in on your heart space. How does your heart feel right now? <clears throat> And you might even ask your heart, what do you need? My heart who beats for me all day long, feels for me, carries for me, sustains me when I feel weary. What do you need right now? And then listen. Allowing what your heart needs to boil down maybe into one word. Perhaps it is hope or rest. Perhaps it is strength or courage or softening. Whatever it is, but you allow this <clears throat> to come into <clears throat> the forefront of your mind. Allowing this word to float to the front of your heart. Perhaps taking an inhale here, breathing this word in. And as you exhale, you might even allow the essence of this word, this very thing that your heart needs to drop down into your body a little bit deeper into you. Allowing it to settle in to your very bones. Feeling this word nestle over you <clears throat> in all of the areas that you need it most. Noticing how it feels to allow this word and what it means to settle into your body. How does it feel as it settles into your body? And then if it feels welcome, perhaps this word begins to take on the form of a soft, warm light. What color is the light? And where does this light start at in your body? Perhaps it's your heart space. Perhaps it's the center of your core. Or maybe somewhere else, maybe in the palm of your hand. And with each of your inhales, you might notice that this warm light representing this word that you have chosen for yourself that your heart needs begins to grow. Growing with each inhale. Starting to expand through your body.
over your bones, your muscles, and your ligaments. Seeping into your heart space. Each inhale radiates this thing that your heart needs even further into you. Until your entire body is cocooned in this very thing that your heart has asked for. In a warm, soft light. Covering every muscle and every cell. As your heart pumps this very thing throughout your entire body. Resting here in this place as your whole body is enveloped with this warm, soft light carrying with it that word that you brought to the front of your heart. And you might choose to continue staying here, resting with this word at the front of your mind, front of your heart, or you might allow your mind and your heart space to rest, just passively receiving this nourishing time of just being as I will be quiet for the remainder of our time of rest for the next two to three minutes. But just know that I am still here with you. And there's nothing else you need to do but simply be. You could choose to stay here as long as you like, knowing that this time of rest is yours to do with as you please. Or if you are ready to begin moving out of this time of rest, you might start by moving a small portion of your body, perhaps the toes or the ankles, And if you are lying on your stomach or your back, you might move to one side, resting in the 
in the side lying shape for just a breath or two to give your body some time to come out of this resting time. In your own timing, you could press yourself up gently, coming into a seated shape. An option here to wrap your blanket around you. Staying in this moment of rest for just a moment longer. And if it feels welcome, you might place your hands at heart center. And with our collective breath, you might use this opportunity to bring to the forefront of your mind the affirmation that we've been using during class. And so we'll start with an exhale together. And we'll breathe in. I am free to choose. And exhale at your own pace. My hope for you is that you feel safe, connected, and at home in your body. I celebrate your choices today that you just made on your mat. And I celebrate your courage in showing up today. If you have any questions, any curiosities about this series or this class that we just practiced today, I invite you to message me directly or leave a comment at the bottom of this video. Thank you.